Welcome to One on One, I'm Steve Adubato. Do you know what an abstract artist is? Well, a lot of people hear the term, they don't know what it is. Well, Francine Tind is one of the best, not just in this country, but in the world. She's also a sculptor. She won a Clio for her work as a uh, designer, fashion designer. Talk about eclectic. Talk about talented, somebody who uh, not only is really good at what she does, lots of things, but has the ability to communicate about what she does and help us understand as best we can as non-artists. I'm Steve Adubato going one-on-one -on -one with Francine Tint. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back, let me introduce to you our very special guest. Her name is Francine Tint. She is uh, an abstract artist. She's been doing it for about 26 years. She's also a sculptor. You show in New York, you show all over the country. You also show in New Jersey, in Milburn, where? Uh, Sia Schulte Gallery, Milburn, New Jersey. The Schulte Gallery. Sia Schulte. Mm -hmm. We'll be putting up some information about you. Uh, do we have a website, Alana? We're a telephone number over in New York that's going to let people know how they can find out more information about you. Let me ask you, an abstract artist mm -hmm. as opposed to any other kind of artist? What's that? Um, it doesn't have a... Um something in it. it doesn't have an object in it as a, a face or a, a body or an apple or an orange or a table. It's um, clearly abstract and it's what you read into it. Let's take a look at uh, some of that abstract art as we talk about it, Francine. Let's go to the first piece we have. Take a look at that. Talk to us about that. That's called Nubian um, and it's even darker on this than it normally is. Um, but it's been written about a couple of times, and they said even in the darkness, there's light that comes through, um, even in a very, very dark painting. Um, and it evokes a feeling. It might be a little harder to see on the screen. Uh, it's got a lot of texture in person, and it, it evokes a different emotion in almost everybody that sees it, based on the color. <clears throat> Video doesn't translate well, does Not it? Not too much, yeah. Help me understand something here, Francine. Um, you said it evokes different feeling mm -hmm. in different people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw something pretty dark there. Mm -hmm. You have dark feelings. <laughs> I mean, is it we in me? All do. Is, is, is it my, my interpretation of what I see in me? Is the meaning in me and not in the painting? No, it's 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 well, it's, it's both. It's two? a combination. Mm -hmm. A combination. When, when, what does that mean to you? When I'm doing that it or painting. what it means now? Um, it means that I had certain feelings at a certain time and um, that went into the painting. Um, and then thereafter, it has a meaning to you and hopefully I can translate something to you that way. But you have different feelings and, and different emotions than I and you read into it in, in your way. We talked before we got on the air about um, different types of art. Mm -hmm. And I told you that I've always been fasc fascinated with the art of conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, sort of like a pseudo artist at this, right? Mm. But for you, mm -hmm. real art, mm -hmm. where did it come from? Where did your passion come from to become an artist? Um. Mine was Johnny Carson, so what was your... Really? <laughs> yeah, I said, look at that guy. He really <laughs> makes it look easy. He makes people feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'd like to try to do that. I mean, mm -hmm. no, seriously. But where did yours come from? I had a painter in mind, Helen Frankenthaler, who's a great colorist and, um, and also a woman, and uh, one of the few abstract painters at the time. And I was very, very inspired. Um, she made it look lush and beautiful. And I think... I started painting seriously after my mother passed away. Life took on a different meaning um, to me. I was younger and um, it's hard to deal with a loss. To s it's hard to express it and this is a way for me to express feelings, you know, in a way that language does not. You can communicate things through your art. Mm -hmm through your work as a sculptor. Mm-hmm. And painter. That we can't. Mm-hmm. Yep. You help people who are not familiar mm -hmm. with the art world. Mm-hmm. Doctors, lawyers. Mm-hmm. Uh, people who have sort of regular jobs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> doctors, I don't know if doctors, you know, whatever, <laughs> teachers. Mm-hmm. Talk show hosts. 
you help us understand art or be less intimidated by art? And why should we or why are we intimidated by art? I think people get intimidated with what they don't know. Most people are just used to what they know, and especially people <clears throat> in higher professions, they're treated a certain way, and, and there's sometimes arrogance goes with it. And uh, not all the time, but sometimes. And um, they're used to staying on the plane of what they know and, and not what they don't know or dealing with their senses or their feelings. And so you help those of us who are not artists. Mm -hmm be more open to it? Yeah, just as natural as you're making me feel right now. Um, I kind of see that they might be nervous or something like that, and I, I just say um, you can check one painting against another painting and just kind of, which one do you like better? Just almost simplify the whole language, you know? Um, not even so much why do you like it. And they might say then, you know, I like this because it reminds me of the sea, or I like this because it reminded me of somewhere when I was a kid in the country or you know and and they kind of get looser about it you know not that it has to remind you of something but um, they get into it they lose their ego and, the, and they get into it and that's that's really what the painting is about so if someone were to ask Francine you know, what should you be looking at when you mm -hmm. look at a painting is that an, even an appropriate question um, or a productive question that happens a lot I think um, Without the should, I think you have to kind of feel it and let it in um, and, and not really think you're looking for something or at something specific. It's, it's a new language. It's, it's a new territory, That's a new right. country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. let's, uh, Alana, let's take a look at another one of Francine's pieces. Ready to go? Again, it doesn't translate all that well mm -hmm. on video. In fact, we have the sculpture right in here. Talk to us about this piece. Um, this was a thin dancer, um, and I, I do it from life. <clears throat> that took quite, quite a long time to do. I do it in wax, and then it goes into bronze. And that's clearly a, a woman, uh, so that's easier to, to deal with, I think, for some people than abstract. Um, but I, often people do it from photographs. I don't, so I like, I like the work to have a feeling of life, and, and I think it does. You know? If we can get back into the studio right here. This is risky. I'm going to try to, oh uh, boy. <laughs> uh, this is it. You got it right here? Wow. Oh, yeah. There she is. How She's long gonna... did it take you to do this? That took um, about a couple of months, different sittings, standings. When you're working on a piece mm -hmm. like this, are you working on anything else at the same time? Yes, I am. Good question, yeah. I work a lot on different things. I work on large paintings, small paintings, uh, figure drawings, um, so that there's not a preciousness to it, and um, I can kind of hang a little loose when I'm doing it. So you don't say today's the sculpting day? Right, right. Mix it right. up? Yeah, I do. Different times of the, of the day? I'm a morning person, yeah. Define morning. Um, <laughs> I know a guy who gets up at nine o'clock and goes, Mom, I'm a morning no, person. No, 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 no. I know, I know this business can be four or five in the morning. Um, nine o'clock. And I live in a little penthouse, so I have beautiful, beautiful light. Um, the models often, they have busy days, so sometimes they're there four or five o'clock, and it's beautiful light as well. Uh, so I, I paint and sculpt by the light. Most artists are night people, but not me. You live in an area inhabited by a fair number of artists? Uh, yeah. The yeah, village? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're a New Yorker? Uh-huh. Brooklyn? Uh-huh. You've had a fair number of losses in your life. Mm -hmm. You talked about losing your mom mm -hmm. as uh, one of the things that moved you mm -hmm. in this direction. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have any greater ability to deal with loss, emotional loss, because of your talent as an artist? a way to manifest mm -hmm. the yeah. pain mm -hmm. that the rest of us may not have or may not know we have, because we have, probably have something else we don't even know, like an True. avenue. Yeah, yeah, I think so, I think so. I have a, um, I feel lucky. I feel lucky that way because I can express what people feel often in life and they have no way of expressing it, really. You know, I, I don't want to get too esoteric or mm. philosophical, but I've been thinking about something. Mm. I often, when I'm training people 
some young people want to go into this business, or mm -hmm. I do a lot of training in the area of mm -hmm. public speaking and communication, and people will say, you know, great communicators are born. And I'll say, mm, I don't know about that, <laughs> yeah, because I believe it's great communication or being a great communicator is a craft. Mm -hmm. I said, you can learn it, there are tools, you practice, you mm -hmm. make mistakes, you get feedback, you have a coach. Mm -hmm. But it's not an art, mm -hmm. meaning I believe the difference between art and craft, without again getting too philosophical, is you have a gift mm -hmm. but that it takes the rest a, of us just don't have. It takes a lot of work too. But did God give you some sort of gift? I feel that way. I do. What you do with it is yours. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, Fitz, what was it? I think it was Fitzgerald said that it's 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration. It's work for all artists um, with a gift. It's work, but I do feel it's a gift. But you got a, you've had a lot of breaks, but you had one big break? A few big breaks, yeah. Who, who dis like you're an actress or something? No, well, Who discovered you? Um, well, I had a great um, critic, Clement Greenberg, who was a great, great art critic, one of the greatest. Um, a man people love to hate often, but he was great. I mean, he was great, and he was great in the studio. And I feel really blessed by that. Um, he was a wonderful mentor, about as natural as you are sitting here. And he had this reputation, and, and he was just so natural, so easy, and, and, and so easy to learn from. Um, he would just look at paintings and uh, not go into big, big statements and all of that and uh, just say which one. You put one against another and you could see the difference, you know, and it was kind of almost that simple, but also took work in the studio. Um, that was a great break. Mm. <sighs> commercial breaks. All right, we got to take a commercial break. We're talking with Francine Tint, um, an abstract artist. She's a sculptor. You know what, Alana, our producer, our great producer, Alana Rosenbluth, was having a long day today. You know we do 10 shows in one day? Oh, God, no, I didn't know yeah, that. It's easy for me over here. It's hard for those guys behind mm. the scenes. Alana, when we come back, let's uh, show a couple of clips. Francine's Phillips, Milk of Magnesia, I Am Blue, <laughs> right? We'll talk about how you get into commercials. And also the Saturday Night Live, the Levi spot. We'll do that talking with Francine Tint. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Am I blue? Am I blue? Am I blue? Yes, I'm blue, hoping you won't be too. When you need a laxative, dependable Philips is a true blue friend. Most doctors agree Milk of Magnesia is gentler than the ingredient in the leading tablet. Unlike bulk laxatives, Philips is so dependable it usually works overnight. Am I blue? I'm true blue, just for you. Dependable Philips. Was I blue? How great is that? Now, you designed those costumes. Uh-huh. How did you get hooked up to this Phillips deal? Um, through a recommendation. I was in the costume designer union, and um, <clears throat> they said if anyone could do it, it would be Francine. And they weren't certain that it could be done because it's such a terrible product to make look <laughs> cute, you know? I mean, that was the amazing thing, and I did drawings and showed them what I would do and what it would look like and it was big meetings this was a real big number sitting with the corporation people and you name it so um, was it intimidating yeah yeah but then I felt like I knew what I was doing so it was okay and they approved it and and I proceeded this one the Clio yeah Tell everyone what the Clio is. It's uh, an award, a television award. They have it for costume designers and sets and directors and, you know. For commercials? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. great commercials? Mm -hmm. You've done some other commercials, mm -hmm. including? Um, I wonder if I Fruit can think about loom? that. Fruit of the Loom? Yeah, thank See, you. See, I know this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it. My producers are telling me. You did Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, yeah. A lot of the famous ones, yeah. Mm hmm. Big when time ones. When did you start ones. doing that? Um,. I guess I was a kid, and I was supporting painting with it for a very long time until painting started to take off. Wait a minute. The commercials, which brought in a few bucks, uh -huh. were supporting your painting. passion. Uh-huh. That's right. You got it. So commercials weren't your passion? Um, they were. They started my passion, but it wasn't enough. I didn't feel it was deep enough. I hear you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look. Ready, guys, to go to the other spot. This is the Saturday Night Live Levi's spot, and we'll talk to Francine. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
the spoof on our commercials is what it was from you know setting i live does all these little different vignettes it's a spoof on what we do i'm not us but the commercial world you know <clears throat> on levi's except it's three-legged jeans <clears throat> you had fun with that hard fun hard fun it was hard a work. pressure a lot of hard work a lot of hard work they okay. changed it morning noon and night mm. <clears throat> let's talk a little bit more about the uh the fashion part of it. Mm -hmm. Some of the people you've designed costumes for mm -hmm. include um, Diana Ross. What do I have to help you through this? Yes, okay. I forget. <laughs> That's okay. I'll prompt you and you just tell me. They're you know, like, word association. <laughs> Diana Ross. <laughs> yeah. One of your clients. Yes. Candice Bergen, uh, Barbara Streisand, um, all the top models. Um, wait, 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 hold on. Kissinger. Wait, yeah, yeah, that's the name I was going to go Sammy with. Sammy Davis a, Jr. Back up. You go with. <laughs> Barbara Streisand, mm. you talk about Diana Ross, you go through a few others, and then you say Henry Kissinger. Yeah. What's, what's up with he, that? He wears a blue suit. Yeah, well, no, I selected the suit. He was on the Bob Hope show, and it was a big boat, and um, he was on there, and I selected the suit and got him the shirt, and, you know, for his blue eyes, a paddle blue shirt. You know, Francie, now I feel compelled, because I do these <laughs> 10 shows, right? I got my Levi's, right? Mm -hmm. By the way, these are Gap. They're not even Levi's. And I just got the simple blue thing, right? Mm -hmm. Does this work? You look great. You look great. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You want to do anything with me? Nope. Okay. Nope. All right. Um, <laughs> again, I'm indulging myself. What, Alana, Why what not? do you want me to ask? Alana, you want to come out here and do this show? Mm -hmm. Some of your experiences that really stick in your mind, uh, less than wonderful experiences mm -hmm. with some of these people. Well, Saturday Night Live was one of them. <laughs> they weren't the easiest people to oh, work with? Oh, it was really hard. I would, they worked me morning, noon, and night. I took a shower at 12 o'clock at night, and I came out of the shower, and the phone was ringing with a change. I mean, it looks easy, and I think you would have an idea behind. Well, you're, you seem so natural, and it must be easy, except maybe the hours. Um, this changes every second. The commercial world, all of it changes. 15 seconds left. What do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it, aren't you? You at the moment. I am doing it, yeah. You think this is easy? <laughs> i got to remind people who their clients are. <laughs> this is fun. Did you have fun? I did, very much. Well, yeah. I, I can't believe this is your first time doing a show. because uh, I had a great time. So comfortable. Thank Thanks you. so much. Come back anytime, Francine.